Good evening and welcome to Rye Hill Baptist Church for Wednesday evening, March 31st, 2021. This evening's message brought to us by Senior Pastor Michael Franklin and is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, is entitled, The Potter and the Clay. Enjoy! Let's start with a word of prayer. God, we praise you tonight. God, we want to lift up your holy name, and Father, we want to just uh, praise you. And um, Father, thank you for all the blessings and all that you're doing for Rye Hill Baptist Church. Thank you for these folks, Lord. They love people, and they love you, and Lord, that's so exciting. Be with us now as we enter into our body life and then our uh, message tonight and our prayer time. And Lord, let this just be a spirit-filled service that uh, impacts all of our hearts. In Christ's name, amen. amen. I want to talk to you tonight about the potter and the clay. The potter and the clay. And, uh, you know, pottery uh, is a huge industry in the Near East. And, uh, you know, if you go to Israel or you go overseas, uh, there is much, much uh, there uh, to see. Uh, let me give you the outline. Number one, God's Word. Number one, God's Word. Number two, our flaws. God's Word and our flaws. Number three, God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty. The Bible says... The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Folks, uh, you can see God speaking. And, and we know who Jeremiah was. Uh, he was the weeping prophet. Uh, and it seemed like, you know, when he was speaking to the children of Israel, it was a time uh, where a dark time was. Uh, the leadership uh, was not doing what it needed to do. Uh, it was actually turning people away uh, from the Lord. And uh, Jeremiah had this huge burden, and God was going to use him uh, to, to say, thus saith the Lord. And folks, that's what a prophet does. A, a true prophet just says what God tells them to. So he gives him a command, and the command is, go to the potter's house. Which, if I was Jeremiah and a prophet, that would, you know, you would almost think, what is he talking about? But here's the key, folks, and I'm, I'm not just prophets, I'm talking to you tonight, okay? When God speaks, we need to listen, Amen. okay? God speaks to us. I'm telling you, I've never heard an audible voice, ever heard an audible voice, and I'm not disputing those who have. I'm simply saying, I know when God speaks because there's two ways God can speak to you, okay? One through his word and one through the Holy Spirit. And there's more than two. I'm simply saying through the Holy Spirit and through the word. So God had something he wanted to tell Jeremiah. In the four words I, I, I just jotted down from reading this uh, on Monday morning, he said first to watch, to watch. Okay, folks, we need to watch what's going on in the kingdom of God. We need to watch uh, what others are doing, not to steal their ideas. But it's just like the long range planning committee. We're tweaking things. Folks, we're doing a lot of things right. A lot of things. But we want to never be satisfied. We want to tweak things and do things better and, and, and be innovative and, and, you know, paint outside the box sometimes. So the first thing he said, go watch and then observe. Not just watch it, see what the potter is doing. Okay, the potter. And folks, I'm telling you, I, I, I was thinking and putting myself in that place. There is, I just don't think I could do it. One is, you got to sit still. Two is, you got to have steady hands, real steady hands, okay? And, and you know, I'm, I'm probably hyper, a little more hyper than most people, all right? And the first time my pottery flopped over, I, I, I would, I, you know, I would just, I, I wouldn't like that, all right? So first you watch, you, then you observe, then you learn. You learn, and I've already mentioned listen. And the two things he said, 
Jeremiah, go. You go to that potter's house. He probably walked by that place I don't know how many times, but he went. And God's word, folks, God's word is so important. Psalm 119, Psalm 119.11, you know this scripture. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Folks, God gives us instructions. A potter that is experienced doesn't need an instruction book. All right, he, he has already read, he's already been there, he's practiced it and practiced it and practiced it. All right, so we have to obey, we have to listen to the Holy Spirit, folks, and we have to go and, and follow God's word. The second thing I want you to see, not only God's word, but let's look at our flaws in verse 3. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel. I'm amazed that pottery, uh, and, and when you think of its ingredients, folks, uh, its clay is really just sticky dirt. Okay, sticky dirt. Uh, you can do various things. You, you can make vessels uh, with clay. Uh, one of the things even in the Old Testament and early on the Egyptians did, they made bricks with, with clay. So there's, there's various things that you can use, but when you think about making something, you start from dirt. Think about us. Think about Adam and Eve. What, what did we start from? The dust of the ground. All right? And he breathed life into us. And so, you know, we are all marred, okay? When you just, for instance, if you just plop the clay on there, it, it, you look at it and you think, man, that's ugly. That clay is ugly. There's nothing pretty about that. All right, And when you compare that to your spiritual life, folks, before we found Christ, we were all flawed. We were all marred. Okay? We didn't walk out perfect. We didn't you know, seek after God. God came after us. But the key here is staying on the wheel. The wheels way back when, they have, now have them with motors and all that one. Before the wheel was at the bottom, the wheel was at the top, there was a shaft in the middle, and you literally used your feet to move that while you, in biblical days. Okay? So the, the, the wheel was important. Keeping that clay there is important. And your hands, the potter's hands was important. And folks, I'm telling you, God is the potter. God is the potter. He is the one that decides. And what he did is uh, uh, at salvation. Matter of fact, I tell you how messed up we were. Jeremiah 17, just flip your page over. 17 verse 9. The heart is deceitfully above all things, desperately wicked. Who can know that? Just like that clay just in a pile there. You have to, you have to come to Christ and Christ, you know, gives you that spirit and Christ gives you that new being, that Holy Spirit inside of you. And what he does is he makes something beautiful out of that. He does. And so we see our flaws, but the potter. And, and by the way, it is the potter that decides what design and what you look like. It's the potter that shapes you and molds you. And folks, there's so many, you know, you can make big pots, you can make small pots, you can make wide pots, you can make all kinds, all right? But God hand made you, all right? He chose you from the foundations of the world, and he cannot fix you if you will not stay on the wheel. That is so important. That is our part. We have flaws, but we need to turn our lives over to the potter. We need to trust the potter. We need to believe in the potter and, and realize that, folks, God has something beautiful for all of us. And then the third thing, not only God's word, not only our flaws, but God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty. Uh, let's finish verse 4. And, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred and in hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, and it seemed good to the potter to make. Folks, I'm telling you, God can make anyone, anything beautiful. Beautiful. 
Verse 5, And then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, uh, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord. Look, as the clay is in the hand of the potter, so you are in my hands, O house of Israel. And there's two applications here. The first application is God, through the prophet Jeremiah, was speaking to the nation of Israel. And if you had time to read down through here, and you see this all through the, uh, the Old Testament, he says, if you do this, you will get a blessing. If you do not do this, you will have a curse or a judgment against you. So, folks, it's still our part. Man's responsibility is a part of that. But it is God's sovereignty. He is the one transforming us. And if you think about it, the minute that potter starts spinning that wheel and shaping it, the transformation begins. Lori has a little book, and uh, it's, it's a book to where if you do the pages, you can watch. And Kylie, we were doing it today. Kylie is intrigued by this book. And what it is, it's a, it's a larva just on, it's, it's just sitting on a branch there. And as you flip that through, you can see the larva growing. And right at the end is a beautiful butterfly. Is that not a great picture of what God does in our lives? Amen. Folks, he transforms us. He molds us. He makes us. He grows us. Sometimes he has to prune us first. But he is the potter. He is the potter. God decides these things. And what you have to understand is this is a lifetime process. A lifetime process. Philippians 1. Philippians 1. You can go there with me. Verse 3. Philippians 1, 3, and I close with this. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day uh, until now. All right? When you get saved, folks, it is the first day of the rest of your life. Amen. It is a beautiful thing. Now, here's the ver verse I want to close with. Being confident of this very thing, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it unto the day of Jesus Christ. You know what he's saying? Folks, we never arrive spiritually. We have to stay on the wheel. We have to have God uh, molding us and making us. We, we have to, like a diamond or diamond or a rough cut, you have to cut the edges off. You have to, you know, uh, you know uh, mold that. You have to, with diamonds, and the pinnacle of that is when he comes back and we get our glorified and perfect bodies. So I say, as Jeremiah said, man, stay on the wheel. Stay on the wheel. Obey. Obey. Listen to God. Listen to his word. Listen to his prophets. Realize that we are all flawed, folks. All right, nobody's perfect. Jesus Christ was the perfect one. And again, allow God to mold you and to make you uh, into what he wants you to be. And folks, the bottom line, all right, because I understand heaven, heaven is the, the, the ultimate place we are going. But you know what he's truly finding or what he wants here on earth? He wants you to be holy here on earth. Father, thank you for the potter and thank you that we are the clay. Thank you that, Lord, you transform us. Thank you that you just took a pile of dirt, really, and made something beautiful out of our lives. God, I know it applies as a nation, but it also applies us individually. God, I pray that we would simply be the clay in your hands. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We thank you for joining us this evening at Rahel Baptist Church, and may God richly bless you.